We've been learning a ton about linear and quadratic approximations, and I love this problem so, so much because it's going to combine everything that we've learned so far. So here it is. How should lambda, that's this symbol here, how should lambda be chosen so that this function f of x is equal to e to the negative lambda x power over the quantity 1 plus 2 sine of x, how should lambda be chosen so that this function remains as close to 1 as possible when x is near 0? And then once you find this lambda value, you want to use it to estimate this function at 1 tenth to 2 decimal places. So I'd encourage you, please pause the video and work on this and try to figure this out on your own. All right, assuming that you've given it a go, let's do this. Well, let's, let's, let's figure out what we need to do here. So we need, to choose, we need to find a lambda value that makes this function as close to one as possible for x values near zero. So you see this kind of notation and uh, we're talking about linear and quadratic approximations. So we're in that realm. That's what it should tell you. So again, we kind of have two tools. We have, uh, we could make a tangent line and use that to approximate our function. And that is a linear approximation. Or we have this other tool, a quadratic approximation to approximate our function. And we need to decide which one we're going to use in order to find uh, this lambda value. Well, I'm going to argue that we want to make a linear approximation because we want to remain as close to one as possible. And again, if with a linear approximation or make a tangent line. So if we somehow uh, construct, we, we find a lambda value that allows us to make a linear approximation of the line y is equal to one. If we can use that as our linear approximation, well, then any x value we use with under this linear approximation any x value near zero that we, we want to approximate our function with, and our linear approximation is y is equal to one, this line y is equal to one, any x value near zero that we use this for is going to be one. So that, that's exactly what we're after. So that's why we want to make a linear approximation. So let's do that. Let's do that. We want to make a linear approximation of this function for x values near zero, and then somehow design it so that it can be the line y is equal to one. All right, so let's do that. Let's do that. Let's remind ourselves what our linear approximation formula is for x values near zero. So that is going to be f of x is approximately f of zero plus f prime of zero times x. So that's our linear approximation formula. And again, let's let's call to attention what this function is. We can rewrite this as a product of two functions. And we, we have some tricks to work with products of functions that we've learned about. So we can say that f of x is equal to e to the negative lambda x times times one plus two sine of x, sine of x to the negative one power. So now we have this in a product of functions and we know that linear approximations that we could either find the linear approximation of the product of the two functions, or we could take the individual linear approximations for each of the functions, multiply them together. I keep writing F. I mean to say, I mean to write G. And we could multiply these guys together and toss out some higher order terms in this case. So again, I just preference here, I'm gonna go with this right hand side. So I'm going to find the individual linear approximations of both of these functions here, multiply them together, toss out some higher order terms. So I, I'd encourage you to pause the video and give that a try on your own. All right. So just some notation stuff. I'm going to call this guy G and then I'm going to call the other guy H. So let's find the linear approximation of G first. So again, this is for x near zero. And we know the linear approximation of e to the x is going to be approximate is going to be one plus x. So for x values near zero, e to the x is approximately one plus x. We learned that in previous videos. And then for e to the negative lambda x, all we do wherever we see an x, we replace with a negative lambda x. So one minus lambda x. One down. All right. Let's let's find the other one. Again let me grab some more space. This right here under our notation is the linear approximation of G. 
So now let's find the linear approximation of H. And you might look at this and go, well, okay, I know the linear approximation of sine of X for X values near zero. And I also know the linear approximation of one plus X to the rth power for X near zero. But I, I don't think I've come across using both of them before. How, how do we do that? Well, what I'm going to say is that we can do this. We can find the linear approximation of sine of X for X values near zero, plug that back in, and then find the linear approximation of whatever we find after that. So what I'm saying is for X near zero, we can write that sine of X is going to be approximately X. And then what we do is we can rewrite this guy as one plus two times X to the negative one power. And then we find the linear approximation of this. So we know how to do that. One plus X to the rth power we saw in previous videos is going to be one plus R times X. And that's for X values near zero still. And we want to now find one plus two X to the negative one power, which is going to be approximately, and again, uh, wherever we see an R, we're going to replace with a negative one and any X value, we're going to replace with two X. So we have one plus, and then this is negative one times two X. So we get one minus two X. And this right here under our notation is our linear approximation of H. And I, I really want you to feel good about this. So I'm actually, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Why don't we come back up here? And why don't we do the linear approximation of one plus two sine of X to the negative one power, the old fashioned way through this formula. Let's do that. I don't want you to feel good about what we just did. So again, we're saying that H of X, H of X, we will call one plus two sine of X. And all of this is to the negative one power. And we're going to make a linear approximation of it for X near zero. So H of X is going to be approximately, we'd find H of zero, H of zero is one plus two sine of zero is just zero. So this is one. And then taking our derivative, we have negative one times one plus two sine of X, sine of X to the negative two power. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by two cosine of X so times two cosine of X. That's our derivative. And then we need to evaluate it at zero. So we have H prime of zero, and that is going to be negative one times one. So we have negative one times two cosine of zero is one. So this is, this is times two and that is negative two. So filling this in, we have one minus two X. And that right there is exactly what we got down here. So I hope you feel good about what we did. All right. So let me square that off. Let me square that off and we'll come back down here. So again, where, where are we at? Well, well, we found our two linear approximations. We need to now multiply them together. And in this case, toss out some higher order terms as well. So let's do that. Let's multiply these guys together. So I can write out L of L of G times L of H. And this is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to multiplying one minus Lambda X times times one minus two X. Multiplying these guys together, we get one minus two X minus Lambda X and then plus two lambda x squared. And then again, we want to take the linear approximation of that. So that just means throw out the higher order term. So this guy goes away and this is our linear approximation. Now, what do we want to do? We want our linear approximation to be the, the line y is equal to one. So we need to set this equal to one and then find the lambda value that ensures that. So let's do that. We can subtract one here. The ones will cancel and then we can add, we can add a Lambda X. So we have Lambda X is equal to negative two X and then dividing by X, we find that Lambda Lambda is equal to negative two. So that's what we have. Lambda is equal to negative two. And again, what is this saying? Well, this, this was our linear approximation. So you can plug in negative two and you would get 
you would get one. And that is exactly how we design this. We now have the fact that when we take a linear approximation under this lambda value for our function, we will have the line y is equal to one in order to approximate values of our function for x values near zero under a linear approximation. So now rewriting our function, let's come back up and see what we're after. We're gonna rewrite our function under this lambda value and then we're going to use what we found. So let, let's first rewrite our function, then we'll talk about it. So here we go. f of x is now going to be, f of x is now going to be e to the negative. So if we plug in lambda is negative two, that's e to the two x power now. So we have e to the two x power, e to the two x power. And then still we wanna write this as a product of functions. So we have one plus two sine of x to the negative one power. So this is our function under our lambda value, and that lambda value bakes in this idea that will remain as close to one as possible for x values near zero. And now we want to use this in order to approximate our function at one-tenth to two decimal places. And we will do that in the next video.